I'm Colin Ambrose. Welcome to American Rivers Tour. I own a restaurant in Sag Harbor, New York called Estia's Little Kitchen. But when I'm not working, I love to get out on the rivers across the country, meet chefs and guides, and spend time learning about their little corner of the woods. It's a trip that I wouldn't miss for a lifetime. Thanks for joining us on the American Rivers Tour. I hope you get a chance to try this trip out someday too. So tell us real quickly the difference between a fish decoy and a lure. Well, a lure has hooks, and it, uh, I guess lure and decoy is similar if it's luring something, but a decoy doesn't have hooks. It's just weighted and balanced so it swims. So when you have a hole in the ice, and you have it on a stick with a string, and you jig it, and it swims in a circle, and then you have a spear, and when a fish comes in to check it out, you spear the fish. Do carvers put their signature on them, or they have, can you tell uh, Oa's fish decoy from a guy from Grayling, Michigan? I mean, how, how yeah. do you know? It, now it, they do, but in those days, it, they didn't sign him. It was just some hermit living in the woods, or Indians, or you sometimes could tell tribes if you went to a certain Ojibwe area. They had signature. But, yeah, but there was approach. No, there was no signing. And were they using paint, or how were yeah. they adorning uh, them? Indians burned a lot. Variety of woods, or are they primarily hardwood, softwood? A lot of Indians used basswood just because they had it growing there too and it's easy to carve and were they Drink. adding weight they the indians would use rocks and you know whatever but then it's the the white people started making them it was lead you know like i put uh i put lead in here and then i put a wood plug over it so it doesn't it's not exposed and it won't fall out and that's the thing with salt water loads too. You have to make them really rugged. And you're through wired, like a wire goes, stainless steel wire goes through the whole thing. It goes through the swivels for the hooks so they can't pull out. And uh, it goes through the lead so the lead can't fall out. And it's just a solid uh, thing. You know, and then when Being through wired, it's all connected to, you know, you could catch a hundred pound fish on this and it wouldn't break. <coughs> yeah. What kind of These paint are, are you using? What's the finish? I just make them really good where they're sealed and, uh, and I use paint that's like a hundred bucks a pint. You're fishing with your lures primarily? Yeah, that's all I use, and I don't use bait. I just use... Just hand-carved, right? And it's nice when you come up with an idea and figure out something and then hop in the boat, go out and try it. You know, 90% of the time it's a failure or they don't work or it's like, you know, you just come back and try again. Just see what... Uh, and I don't... Half of my stuff ends up on shelves in, with collectors and display, but I make them so they work. They're sealed like the you seal it, it takes four days worth to dry. It's like a pain in the ass. But you're you're using actual just raw material, right? Yeah, it's like when you do something on a lathe. Um, like if you have a piece of square wood and you start working it on the lathe, you end up with two ends that are square. And I like leaving those on there when I keep the ends on. Then when I get ready to drill holes or do slots, it, I, it'll sit, you know, by a drill so it sits straight and I can find a center. And, and, and then when all the holes are drilled for the weights and whatever, then I can cut the ends off. But I like keeping it that way. <coughs> and then I can, you know, I can find the centers and and if I have to do a slot for a lip, you know, I can just slide it mm -hmm. and it stays flat. Some of the work that you've done that I've seen is very intricate and you're using materials that aren't paint 
and wood. Oh wow, look at that. That's a bass lure right there. Yeah, if I've that's ever fresh seen one. one. Large mouth bass. Yeah. That's a big fish that's gonna take that. <laughs> that is musky. that is unreal. Yeah, my, oh for sure. Uh, yeah. It's more of a musky because a I northern might hit that as well. And uh that's a fish that's gonna give you a run for your money. And it moves around like when you're reeling it in, it does mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff. Wonderful. Do that's a beauty. Do you spend time studying the patterns of like a frog or of like the um, squid that you were talking about to see what the fish are yeah. looking for and how you can manipulate Yeah, a lot of times if I'm with, it's like now with computers, it's great with Google. Mm -hmm. Just Google. I just got an order the other day for a spotted muskie, which I never heard of. And uh, so I just Google it, spotted muskie, and then hit images. And just scroll through like until you find an image that you like. Mm -hmm. uh, How said, big will it end up being, you imagine? He wants it 12 inches. You know, I've sort of stopped doing big ones. I used to do a lot of big 20 inch. Are there shows for ice fishing lures? Tons of them. Really? And where will they be? In in towns like Sheboygan and Monroe, Manitowoc? Or Monroe, I mean, Michigan is a big one. Cadillac, Michigan is a big one. Uh, there's a bunch in uh, Wisconsin. There are, and uh, they're they're all over the place. And there's even some here. If you if you could talk a little bit about using alternative materials, uh, I know that you use tea boxes. Is that right? Well, the old timers, um, you know, they didn't have any money. They're living in the middle of the woods, and it, it needs fins so that it helps it glide, even with the weight and it's weighted so it's almost neutral and will start moving forward but the fins help it glide mm -hmm. and sometimes you can either carve a curved tail so that it'll swim in a circle or a tin tail that you can bend and make it do a smaller or larger circle and did you bring that idea of, of adding the scales in that regard or had you seen that done prior I've seen one of your pieces that's literally finished with scales from a material like that. Oh, it's just that I tend to like take things over the top. You know, I'm just sitting in here. And that particular one that you saw with all the little circles cut out of a, it's one of one of Patton's. Yes. I mean, that took like three months. It did. To make. Yeah. And cutting the circles out and then nailing them on and overlapping them so you didn't see the nail. I'm just like, you know, just doing, you know, for no other reason that it's just insane. Yeah. Well, it's gorgeous. It really is beautiful. Well, it sure is nice uh, of you to make time for me today. I appreciate it. Um, y your name is Oa, and could you pronounce your last name for you? For me? Um, Bjering. The J is silent. B-J-E-R-R-I-N-G. And it's sort of Bjering. I guess it's a, just a Scandinavian. And they pronounce, pronounce it probably even different. You know, my first name, A A G E. Nobody knows how to pronounce it. And it's just phonetically O W A. And Danish people probably pronounce it a little different. You know, mm -hmm. Well, uh, you got a special thing going on here. And it's an honor to come and visit you and learn a little bit about it. I sure would uh, like to stay in touch, and, I, and, and I'm going to spend some time when I'm in Wisconsin next. I have a home up there, and I'm going to go and try to seek out one of these shows and learn a little bit more about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.